Hi there, I'm Kevin Devine and this is Divine Encounters, where I bump into stars and celebrities and have unplanned, unscripted chats with them here in the heart of London. So Divine Encounters, it's lunchtime. I have James Nocte here. You wake up Britain every morning, Mr Nocte? Well, fortunately not every morning because it's <laughs> three o'clock in the morning when I do get up to go in and do the programme. But tomorrow morning I will be waking yeah. up. Well, the best bit of Britain, shall we say. Absolutely. Um, and, and you're on radio, you're a well-known voice, and you interview loads of people right across politicians, mm. stars, people that have got books out. Who's the toughest interviewee for you? Who do you sort of think, oh, challenge here? Well, it's interesting when you say challenge. Um, Gordon Brown, when he was in office um, mm. in as Chancellor or as Prime Minister was the most difficult. Not because it was a challenge, you know, intellectually, what are you going to ask him? Mm -hmm. It was trying to get him to stop. <laughs> really? You know, he's a very difficult man to interview because uh -huh. it comes out like a wall of sand. So um, the best politicians to interview are the ones who enjoy the game. I don't mean that frivolously, but will yeah. we'll engage. Understand. Absolutely. And, uh, I think it's, it's extraordinary how many politicians haven't understood this. That actually, if they, if they say, well, I don't know, or <laughs> chuck it back at you, instead of coming out with a sort of routine soundbite. So in many ways, the difficult ones are the ones who just read their briefs. Um, and I'm surprised how many of them haven't learned the lesson. But anyway, they're, they're all good fun. And, so, and are still, do you still get excited every morning when you I open get, the, the news and think, oh... I get very excited. I mean, I've got it in my, my blood. I was doing an event uh, here in London, actually, la uh, last night with mm -hmm. Harry Evans, great mm -hmm. former editor of the Sunday Times, about press freedom and, and the, the, the follow-on from the hacking scandal and regulation and so on. And we had a room of 250, 300 people, of editors and all the rest of it. And... Of course, what united everybody in the room was that we all had in our blood a kind of romantic feeling about journalism that's still there. You know, mm -hmm. the news, what do you do? Uh, how can you be straight about it? Uh, what are the duties of an editor? How do you stop the police walking into the Guardian and saying, you know, who are your sources? All the rest of it. And I do think that that, that matters, actually. And without being pompous or sort of soupy about it um, you know the business of journalism whether it's in print or on the air uh, being straight adding to the kind of democratic conversation mm -hmm. which is a terribly pompous phrase I mean it's really important so, so from what you're saying that it sounds as if your opinion is that certain people within the industry have crossed the line somewhere well, I and mean, I'm maybe think, breaking some unwritten rules. No, I, I mean, I, well, I mean, it's clear that people have, have crossed lines, uh, probably legal lines as well as mm. ethical lines. But I think that the business of um, defending the idea of free speech is really important. And I mean, what came out of this conference was the knowledge, which is a very painful piece of knowledge uh, for the trade, but it's true, that people out there think that self-regulation of the press hasn't worked. Mm. And the trick is to make sure that the press itself comes up with something that does work uh, rather than some heavy-handed state intervention or privacy laws or whatever it is, which would actually work enormously against the public interest, mm. although, they, of course, they would be promulgated as in the public interest. So it's a hugely important moment. But, I mean, that makes it sound terribly pompous. I mean, the point about journalism is it's fun. It should be. It, it should and, be. And I don't mean fun because it's frivolous, yeah. but fun because it's, you know, it's a great thing to do. Yeah. And outside of your broadcasting career, um, I believe you're a writer as well? Well, I do try to write. And I'm trying to write, but I'm not telling you what it is. OK, right. Is right. it secret at the moment? It's secret. Right. But something we can maybe look forward to. It's not a porn future. novel. Right, OK. That's but it's secret. <laughs> but Fair we'll enough. get that on the record. I mean, we are in Soho, but I mean, you know. It's very true. All right. And finally, if people want to find out about you personally online, do you have a... Do you do the Facebook thing? I don't. Do I'm, do I've, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a kind of... Uh, a recently... Um, deflowered virgin tweeter in the sense that I've sent about eight tweets okay so I'm not a virgin but I'm I'm not very experienced yet okay you're but, it'll, but it'll get quite good good um, thank Nocte you very J. much for your oh we will we will look that one up um, and the final thing how do you get yourself bright in the morning because it's such an early start I tell you if somebody said get up at three in the morning and drive a bus yeah. or milk the cows yeah. which people do I would say no but if they say get up at three o'clock in the morning and, by the way, you can present the Today programme and talk to millions of people, I say, well, I might consider it.